Hi guys, how are you? Mine this one titanium. Welcome back to Real Macro Economics and Investing. Patreon.com slash Real Macro. So I'm going to do this video. I'm going to go back a little over a year and I'm just going to kind of reassess everything. All my calls, uh, how it all worked out, uh, what I did wrong, what I did right. Um, and, um, and, and, and in doing so, it's more for me than you guys, okay? Uh, but w once you, you do something publicly, it uh, kind of forces you to to be, uh, you know, uh, honest with yourself and, uh, and, and with the people that, that follow me. Uh, so let's get started. Um, first of all, before I, I begin, there's, there's different kind of categories of people that you're going to meet. And there's about four or five of them. Okay, the first person is going to be the the person that's just going to tell you whatever the economy is doing. Um, what do you think about the economy? Uh, it's going up, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm still going to buy. Yeah, everything's great. Right? Economy is going down. Uh, what do you think about the economy? Yeah, yeah, it's going down. Uh, buy. <laughs> right? So you you got that person. Uh, and it's okay if they're long-term investors, 401k, yeah, for those people for sure. But I'm talking about the other ones that love to talk about the economics, but uh, never have any skin in the game. And, and in fact, none of these people that I'm going to talk about have skin in the game. So they'll tell you, you know, like, yeah, you know, they're always cool. They're, the, 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 the first type is always cool. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, just keep buying. Okay, but they love to tell you about the economy. Uh, the next person, you're going to have the bipolar. Whatever the economy is doing or whatever the chart is doing, eh, the opposite is true. <laughs> this is the Mike Norman kind. Uh, market's going up. Yeah, it's bullshit. It's, well, the great unwinding is coming. Uh, dollar's going up. Ah, that's bullshit. It's, it's going to go down. The zombies, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> the market is going up. Okay, my market is going up. Uh, it's going to keep going up. Don't listen to them. It's going to go up much, much higher. Then you got the, the bear shitters that no matter what the fuck the data does, the charts do, no matter what, nothing is ever good enough. Okay? Nothing can ever be good enough for these people. Ever. Never happen. Then you have the perma uh, bulls. Uh, oh! The, the, the data just came in fucking horrendously bad. Oh! That's a lot better than I thought, <laughs> right? It's uh, nothing is ever bad. Everything is just well. That's that's a lot better than I thought. Well, that's way above what I thought was going to happen. Whoa, that's that's really good actually, right? It's going higher. It's doing this. It's doing that, right? <clears throat> but like I said, none of these people have any skin in the game, and uh, they won't tell you their trades. You you will never see their portfolio. They'll just uh, a shotgun a whole bunch of different predictions and uh, depending on what the market is doing um, they're going to look very right for example when the financial crisis hit Schiff was always right he's uh, Schiff uh, knows what he's talking about he's the man you know all the way down and then uh, from 2015 on oh now, now that I know the market's going up, let me tell you, I'm Logan. I'm going to tell you that the bears have been wrong and that bears are this and the bears suck and everything is great. And I'm going to tell you about my model and my uh, predictions. And much in the same way as Schiff, uh, he's going to look right. And everybody's going to be like, oh, you know, Logan knows what he's talking about, right? But Logan never told you about this uh, massive decline, right? Wasn't. Ah, oh, don't worry about it. Just keep buying. Uh, yeah. Well, that sounds great, but uh, you cannot take uh, with leveraged accounts uh, such big losses. I'm sorry to tell you that. And if you're a long-term investor, uh, you would never be listening to Logan, okay? Uh, because you would just buy, and that's it. That that's your strategy. Your strategy is every month you're going to buy, and you're never going to even bother looking at the at the data because you're not going to sell. Why would you sell? You're a long-term investor. You're just going to keep on buying whatever the, you know, uh, whatever it is you're buying. S&P, emerging markets, whatever it is that you're allocating your money, you're just going to keep buying. So economic data means nothing to you. 
Uh, same thing with the shifts of the world, right? It's not just Logan. Um, same thing with uh, Mike Norman, all profits, right? Uh, that guy, disaster area, right? If you if you go in and you start doing what he's telling you to do, you're gonna blow yourself fucking right out of the water. Mental gain, mental gain. Now, this is true of everybody. That they're either going to talk about the really short term or they're going to talk about the very long term. So, for example, um, Logan is going to tell you the 10 year today is at 2%. The 10 year is down 9.9%. The 10 year today is at 1.8%. Okay, so, well, if you're talking about economics, who gives a shit what the 10 year did today? It doesn't mean anything, right? And you should not be getting daily updates and a bunch of fucking charts thrown at you. The housing starts are much better than expected uh, this month. And, uh, you know, the unemployment data is much better than this. And it's this. And uh, why do you need to tell that to people about economics? You don't. The only people that need to know that stuff are people that are trading, not investors, trading. And if they're trading... More likely than not, the trading leverage, okay, whether it be Forex or it be, you know, uh, triple ETFs or whatever the case may be, uh, these people need to know that information. Conversely, you're going to have the other people, uh, the Mike Norman is the all profits, mental game, mental game in the long term, in the long term, in the long term, right? <laughs> if you have mental game one day in three years, you might squeak out a fucking break even, but we're not going to consider the the cost of holding something or the lost uh, return investment you could have had just holding, you know, I don't know, so, some other asset. <laughs> We're not going to talk about that stuff, right? We're only going to talk about nominal numbers. And then the the, the perma bulls, you know, are always going to tell you, well, this is backward looking indicators. You know, eventually this is going to be bad and it's going to be really, really bad. And, oh, did you see the data today? It came in very weak. Oh, look what the data, you know, the S&P was down 2% today. And one day, you know, it's going to be bad. So that's where these people reside. Okay. Um, in my case, I tell you what's going to happen, not only in the short term, not, not that I care too much about the short term, but the medium and longer term. And that's, that's, what I do, and I show you my trades. At least I do for my subscribers. And um, I'm gonna kind of go over, starting from August. Uh, I'm sorry, July of last year, and just kind of go through all my calls. And again, it's more for me than it is for you. So if you want to switch off, go ahead. Um, I said that oil at 75 in July uh, should be shorted. Why? Because the economic data looks so good, world growth, everything looked wonderful. And when usually that happens, they tend not to do as well in the coming months. Okay. Did I know that this was going to happen? I had no fucking clue. <laughs> right? That's, that's, there's no way for anybody to know that. And sure enough, when I said that oil is going to drop, because oil is based on, you know, global demand, um, ah, you know, the market kept going up. Ah, you don't understand. And the EIA report said this, and the EIA report said that, and that, 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 and all this bullshit. I'm like, oh, God. You know, like, dude, stop. Stop with these fucking reports. The reports are opinions. Okay? It's just somebody's opinion. And again, they're either going to tell you about what happened, the short term, or the very long term. That's all. That's all it does. I'm not saying you shouldn't. You, uh, you shouldn't. Well, you shouldn't listen to reports. You should listen to data points, okay? And when 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 I'm when I'm saying data points, you should look at all the data points and just basically look at the trend. I'm not don't trade data points. That that's garbage. Anyway, let's continue on. So I said, you know, that 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 oil is going to start to decline. And people told me I was wrong. And then in, uh, I guess, September, late September, I told my friend Edward uh, Delzio, I said, man, something just happened in the market because m the portfolio, and, and when you trade enough, uh, you notice that your portfolio sudden, suddenly stops behaving a certain way, 
okay you build a portfolio you know you said okay this with this and that and and you build it and, and it all works fine and then suddenly it just stops and you're like what the fuck just happened if you do this enough you you start to sense it you feel it you can see it right so i said man something just shifted i don't know what it is but <laughs> something looks fucked up and that was somewhere somewhere in here okay sure enough um the market tanked all right by december um then you got uh, the great big rally huge now again uh in my call all in here i said you know this is a buying opportunity this is a buying opportunity and in fact when we got to the bottom here i said you know this is this is probably it and uh, i have something that's called the limp tick right kind of looks like this i said this is probably it we're going to get a bounce now did i know it was going to go straight up i have no idea that's not something that i uh that i can tell you when a wave is going to end no no idea but i did say that this would start to bounce sure enough it did bounce and it kept going okay gave nobody the opportunity to get in um if you got out too early oh well tough shit uh <laughs> go fuck yourself because i'm going to keep going up and then we got the correction finally right in here and i posted this live okay um got out here we shorted got out here and then we continued on higher and then this formed and i said ah this doesn't look right and then we got this drop and got that as well uh and then we started going sideways now when this happened here my call to subscribers was up oh, we're in a sideways market okay because i kind of forgot to say that i said oh, that was sideways market well what, what does that mean well <laughs> what it means is that sideways markets um are very very difficult to trade just just like bear markets are difficult to trade because the moves are quite large the stops are forget about them okay the, if you're using stops you're fucked okay these moves in here these are huge and they just kind of whips all back and forth right and then you get this and then you get that and then this and then this and then this is very 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 difficult so whether you were a bull or a bear or a, you know the cool guy or whatever or even me and you you guys should notice that this past year has been very difficult for me i'm not posting a whole bunch of hey look i kicked ass this you know made money on this made money and the reason for that is because um sideways markets are very difficult okay and uh if you don't recognize them as such you're going to blow your account over three times over okay you're going to fucking destroy yourself so let me give you an example here the logans of the world the uh, uh mike normans of the world uh, the, the perma bulls because i guess now he's a perma bull or whatever since uh this past year has made a whopping three percent <laughs> okay this is this is all the bullishness they got out of the market since uh september 2018. so all that hoopla yeah yeah we're going higher everything is great everything is wonderful managed to get three percent from all-time highs the bulls on the other hand i'm sorry the bears on the other hand okay i'm sorry the bulls at the same time had to deal with a 20 percent drawdown okay the first one was 11 percent then it went to 20 percent then they got another drawdown of seven percent and then you know six percent and now and that's a lot of drawdowns number one and one of the drawdowns was huge okay if you are in a leveraged account and you're taking a 20 percent fucking hit you're gonna blow yourself out like i said three times over you're fucked if on the other hand you're a perma uh bear okay and you shorted this and you're like oh this is the bubble the bubble's gonna explode <laughs> right up in your face then then, then then the bubble is gonna explode <laughs> right up in your face and then the bubble is gonna be <laughs> right in your face okay 
So the market has fucked everybody across the board. Um, for me personally, I'm down, I don't know, I think 20% for the year. Okay, I was up as much as 60 and then I was down 20 and whatever. Uh, it doesn't matter because the year is not over yet. But uh, I did make a lot of money on Bitcoin. But I'm talking about the trade only on stocks, okay, NDX. Now, if you were saying you're a bull here, okay, back in September, if you're saying yeah, everything is great, yeah, market, economy, everything is great, if you're a bull here, today, right, as of closed of Friday, you are up 1.7%. And you're still saying the same fucking shit. Hey, everything is great. Don't worry about it. Yeah, everything is great. <laughs> I want you to think about that. Okay? Um, how wrong are these people? How wrong? Okay. Um, again, multiple fucking drawdowns. Huge drawdowns. The kind of drawdowns... Again, if you're an investor, you're not looking at this stuff. doesn't matter to you. Uh, if you have a $5 account, you, you've blown yourself out I don't know how many times by now. But when the bulls are making fun of the bears, and yet they can only manage 1.7% return in a year, and then the bears are making fun of the bulls, and you know they the market went straight down and then straight back up, you're both equally fucked up as far as I'm concerned. Okay? Because you got to be fucking honest. <laughs> you both are fucking wrong. That's it. That's And that's that's what a contrarian means. That, you know, it doesn't mean saying the opposite. It means you think differently. Okay. And that's where I come in. That's, that's, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I try to be as honest as I possibly can. And if I'm not being honest, it's because probably I'm not seeing something. Okay. Now, um, this is the difference between these experts, whether it be bull or bear, all these experts, that they're not going to sit here and go back and say, man, what have I done this past year? Was I right? Was I not right? You know, what are things going to look like going forward? Well, fuck, if you couldn't be right this past year, then how the fuck are you going to be right the next year? It's not possible. That's why you got to learn from yourself. That's why you got to go back and do what I'm doing, and kind of say, okay, well, I said this, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. So, if you truly want to be a good investor, and you really want to start to, to learn, the first person you got to look at is yourself, and you got to learn from you, okay? That's the first person. If you, if you, you know, it's okay to be wrong. There's nothing wrong with being wrong. It's not okay to stay wrong, okay? And I've said this a million times. You got, you got to be honest with yourself. You can't be a good investor without being honest with yourself. And this has been a fucking horrible market to trade. Period. Be honest. I don't give a fuck if you're a bull or a bear. <laughs> the market sucks. Why does it suck? Because the fucking economy sucks. Not because it's, it's, it's going to collapse or it's going to go to fucking euphoria land. We don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. Okay? But it's not as good as people used to say. Uh, it was good, right? And it's not as bad as people used to say it was bad. So that's why, you know, you can sound really good talking about the economic data, but in the end of the day, if you don't show your trades, uh, nobody can judge to see how good you are. And I said all the way back here, I said, you want to short the top and buy the bottom, short the top and buy the bottom. The problem is that even me, <laughs> who I think you should short the top here is having difficulty doing it. I'm, I'm having a hard time because the market is doing crazy shit. This 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 should have, this should have resolved to the downside. This should have resolved to the downside, and it keeps doing this. Okay, um, it's hard. It's very difficult. And I'll tell you right now. Usually these things get tested. Now is it going to ha happen? Now is it going to happen two years, three years from now? I have no clue. But this is going to get tested one way or another. Okay. So um, that's, you can quote me on that, mark it down somewhere, whatever. Now, does that mean I'm going to trade it effectively to, to capture this move? I don't know. I hope I do. But when the market is behaving in such a manner, 
like it is here, okay, going in the wrong direction. See, if it would have done something like this, this would have been bullish. This would have been a sweet little move to the upside, okay? It didn't do it. It didn't do it. Instead, it did the absolutely wrong thing to do, which is create this kind of football-looking, uh, you know, goalpost thing. This usually is bearish, okay? But um, but it's got to start to roll over. It can't just, uh, you know, continue high base, continue higher high base, and then fall back, and then higher base, and keep doing this uh, this this kind of movement. You can't, you can't, you can't. If it keeps doing this all the way to infinity, you're fucked, right? You can't hold on short forever. And that's why I always say you got to take the economic data, you got to take the charts, you got to contrast the two, and then you got to come up with a good risk reward and then implement it and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work, you know? And that's that's the way it is. Your your loss is going to be small. Okay? Uh if it does work, you're going to be right and it, believe me, if, if you're right and and this this happens, you, you know, who gives a shit if you if you took a little loss here? Okay, or even a loss from here to here when you made this much money. Doesn't matter. You can be wrong fucking 20 times <laughs> like this, right? And be right one time and you'll make a shitload of money. And that's why it's important to understand macroeconomics and bare knuckle charting. Very important. But it doesn't mean that you're going to be making money every single day. And you can go months without making money. Believe me. Uh, that's just the, that's the nature of the beast. All right. So enough of that. Now we're going to go on to my other calls. I, my, I, I said that when the rest of the world interest rates are falling and they're going into negative territory, it's the same thing as if the U.S. is raising rates. Why? Because it's the ratio between the two. It's like gravity. So when, when you see the rest of the world interest rates are going down okay you can expect that at some point it's going to affect the u.s it's just the way it is okay so that that's what i said a lot of people were like confused about what i was saying i don't know why but oh that's not the way it is and it's not, okay well let's hear what what the fed said uh this past uh past week it's not there's no one thing that that is dispositive among all financial conditions. The yield curve is something that we um, that we follow carefully, um, and again, based on our assessment of all the data, we still think it's a positive outlook. Um, the thing, so just to talk about the current situation, uh, you've seen you saw the you saw long-term rates move down a whole lot and then re retrace two-thirds of that move in the space of a few days. So I think re what really matters for all financial conditions generally is when there are changes, material changes, that are sustained for a period of time. So, um, but why, why are long-term rates low? There, are a number, there can be a signal about expectations about, about growth there for sure, but there can also just be low-term premiums. For example, just, well, it can just be that there, there's this large quantity of negative yielding and very low yielding sovereign debt around the world. And inevitably, that's exerting downward pressure on U.S. sovereign rates without really necessarily having an independent signal. Nonetheless, that is a signal about weak global growth, probably, and weak global growth would affect us. So global capital markets and the global economy are quite integrated. So this is something we're, we pay careful. We're not going to be dismissive about the yield curve, but and I think you can tell on the on the on the committee, there's a range of views. There are some who are very focused on the yield curve, others not so much. You know, from my perspective, you watch it carefully, and uh, um, you know, I think you need to be asking yourself a lot of questions if if the yield curve is inverted as to why that is. And you see what I, you see what the man is saying. It's exactly what I said, right? That number one, this is not a yield curve. In, in the same way that it's been in the past. And the reason that's happening is because we ran QE, we liquefied um, bonds into cash reserves, okay, that are highly liquid, okay, they're running around globally, and they are forcing interest rates lower. Money chases yield. So when that happens, you get an artificial 
suppress suppression of uh, interest rates okay not that they shouldn't be going down global growth is slowing for sure but what I'm saying is the negative rates are artificial it's because there's more cash there's more reserves in the world than bonds and of course that's going to push yields down okay when it's going to, when it's going to push the yields down internationally okay because it's not a US problem it's an international problem especially in Europe when you're going to suppress those wages I'm not those wages the when you suppress those yields it's as if we are raising rates and eventually those dollars are going to find them their way to the US and when they do they start buying them up what's going to happen to yields are going to start, start coming down and that's going to create that uh, artificial suppression of wages and inverted yield curve okay so that's what I said that's exactly what happened and so when everybody was sitting there telling you oh you know we crossed the line interest rates are going much much higher blah 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 did I know we're gonna go in negative rates I had no clue uh, no idea that's not the point but I did say that rates would fall and boy did they ever did fall right and, and, and of course it, they also fell in the US because there was that uh, ratio okay so just like Powell says it doesn't necessarily mean uh, that it's a signal that something is wrong it doesn't okay uh, I think it looks like a duck it quacks like a duck and people are going to interpret it as a duck okay and that's that's their prerogative but um, it doesn't mean it's a duck this time the next thing I said it's not it's not about the two and the ten the two and the ten the two and the ten no the fucking two and the ten. fuck the twos and the ten the only thing that matters is the three and the tens and twenties and thirties because banks uh, think of it like borrowing at the short end and then they lend out at the long end and the and the and the, uh, the spread is what their profit margin is so if you have a a, a, a negative sloping yield curve the banks are not making profits and are going to lend um, and that's going to create a problem I also talked about that now after QE we also pay interest on reserves so that's going to play another factor in there so you know I try to think about it I try to kind of go over everything and I told that I, uh, this was back on August 19th I said you know that there's a credit tightening okay there's a credit tightening I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say here with my fat fingers but I said there's a credit tightening and you know some of the data is going to come in a little bit weaker well that hasn't been true right uh, housing came out better everything is looking great um, now obviously there's some data that came in a little bit weaker and some is going to come in a little better but it's only been a month so give it give it a little bit more time and let's see if I'm right right if the data does start to come in a little bit weaker but nonetheless I did say that there's going to be some credit tightening sure enough a few weeks later in this past week what happened right the Fed started to run repos now why the fuck couldn't banks borrow from each other right why why would you know you, you get a 1.8 percent on interest from the Fed on reserves and you're not going to lend to another bank to make fucking eight ten percent and suppress the interest rate right back down and yet the Fed has to run repos which is basically QE even though it's short term and so on it doesn't matter the point is the balance sheet of the household is fine there's a shitload of fucking liquidity worldwide uh, the economy is doing fine right we have 3.7% uh, uh, unemployment uh, wages are rising in real terms 160 million people are working weekly unemployment claims are historically low we have more jobs than people looking for jobs everything looks fucking great so why the fuck would this happen now you can be cool about it and be like ah, 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 ah come on yeah, come on it doesn't mean anything after you can be cool like that that's fine but you know you still got to ask yourself that question why is it the way it is okay something is not fucking right somewhere somehow 
Um, and, and, and that's, you know, that's important, I think. If not for uh, no other reason, at least that you are considering and thinking, okay, you know, well, what could this mean? What could this imply? You know, if you go the rest of your life and you're just saying like, eh, whatever happens, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You're a perma bull. Well, eventually it's going to matter. And then you're going to look like a, dick, like a dick, right? So why are you even bothering fucking talking about economics? If you're just going to go, eh, eh, this doesn't matter. Eh, that doesn't matter either. At some point, it does matter. You just don't know how much it matters, okay? If you see the market is not really worried about it, then, okay, you know, maybe I shouldn't worry about it either. But when the Fed comes out and says, oh, we're going to extend it till October 10th, it's like, okay, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. So, again, probably nothing, but, you know, you got to pay attention to it. You got to pay attention to it. But getting back to my point, because I'm doing the review on myself, right? Uh, I did say that credit was tightening, and sure enough, we started getting this repost funny business, okay? Now, let's move on into the MMT fucktarts, okay? The PhD economic experts, you know, the financial insiders, the monetary experts, and the fucking morons. Mosler said that the Fed has a pedals backwards, that the Fed is ineffective, that the Fed is a child with a steering wheel pretending he is driving. Okay. Well, let's take a look at this chart. Okay. This is when interest rates were rising all the way up to 3.25%. And look what happened to home sales. Then interest rates started to fall. And guess what? Home sales started to rise. Now, this is just one chart. Now, you're going to tell me that the Fed is ineffective by raising and, uh, and lowering rates? That's, I mean, if you cannot see it in this chart alone, then you'll be unsalvageable, okay? You're, you you got to be mildly fucking retarded to, to believe anything that Mosler says about uh, pedals being backwards. Bullshit. Mike Norman is another fucking retard. He said the same shit. Okay, these people are full of shit. These are the alternative. Oh, you know, I'm the alternative economist. The Fed is a moron. I know what's going on. No, no, no. You are the morons. You are the ones that are selling, you know, uh, snake oil. The Fed has a dual mandate. It's very simple. Max employment, price stability. On both counts, the Fed has been very, very successful at it. Whether you like it, you don't like it, you agree with it, or you don't agree with it, doesn't matter. That, that, uh, facts are facts. You're not going to change them, okay? We've had uh, today, what, 2.39% core inflation, and we have 3.7% unemployment, and we have 1.2 million more jobs than people looking for jobs. Period. That's, you know, <laughs> we are in the 11th year of the economic expansion, which is record-breaking. We have the longest job expansion in history. Okay? Period. You cannot argue with those facts. I don't give a shit what your opinion is. How much you like or you dislike the Fed. Doesn't matter. Those data points are not going to change. But it goes back to what I have been telling you. It is all about the savings bubble. Interest rates went negative. Why? Interest uh, savings bubble. Too many dollars in the hands of too few people that are pushing down interest rates, right? Um, you, 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 you cannot deny it. It's the way it is. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay? Markets are all-time highs. Why? Because there's not enough savings? Because we have a cash famine, like uh, Mosler says. I mean, come on, give me a fucking break. Why are bonds soaring, interest rates falling? Because there's not enough money in the world? Like, are you serious? Are you that fucking gullible? I mean, come on. So, um, just, you know, if this, if this chart doesn't tell you what's going on, then I, I don't know what to tell you, seriously.
So here's the Fed's balance sheet, and after last week, you know, sure enough, you saw a pop in, uh, in the Fed's balance sheet, right, um, thanks to this repo operation. So um, I am in the camp that I don't know why this happened. Uh, I don't take anybody's explanation uh, as to what the reason is, not even the Fed. Um, eventually, we're going to figure it all out. Uh, you got fucking Mike Norman saying the dumbest fucking things. Oh, it's because of the debt ceiling. Oh, you know, it's because... <laughs> he, he's got a fucking obsession with the debt ceiling. <laughs> As if this is the only debt ceiling we ever hit in our lives, right? <laughs> Guys, he's such a storyteller. Sophistry fucking bullshit, okay? Um, you got... So many people giving so many opinions, and some are too bearish, some are too bullish, some are so dismissive, and, you know, whatever. I, I don't know why it's happening. All I know, in, in my opinion, this should not be happening. With all the liquidity in the world, this sh the last thing that should ever happen was this repo uh, shenanigans, okay? Doesn't mean that it's the end of the world, and it doesn't mean it's a great thing. Uh, but you should be aware of it. Moving on to the next topic about this repo stuff. What's definitely important about what just happened this week is that when MMT says we are uh, inflation constraint, we recognize the constraint of inflation. When they say stupid shit like that and we say <laughs> that's bullshit, because it doesn't matter until it does matter. And when it does matter, it's fucking game over. It's just that simple. Because something that you saw last week will happen eventually. Okay? Eventually, you're going to hit that point where you just printed one fucking keystroke too many. And then the bond market is going to say, you know what? Here's your bonds. Give me cash. I want out. And when that happens the interest rates start to spike, okay? They start to do exactly what happened this past week. The only difference is going to be that this week when it happened, we have $157 trillion of assets and we can easily cover it. So think of it as if, as if uh, you know, you own a, a million-dollar home, okay? And uh, you have, I don't know, $20,000 of debt, and then suddenly uh, you're your credit card starts raising interest rates because uh, you missed a payment because your bank fucked something up or whatever. And <laughs> and then uh, you're sitting there like, oh, fuck that, I'm not paying my credit card, you know, 35% because I missed one payment. Fuck them. Here's your money. Go fuck yourself. Okay, you can do that when you have a million dollars of a a a equity in your home, right? Even if you don't have the cash at the moment. So um, you can just pay it off, right? So think of it like that. Well, well, what if you have $2 million of debt and your equity is $1 million and then, you know, something like this happens? Well, now what? What are you going to do? Borrow more? You can't do it. And that's how you end up uh, with foreign debt, foreign denominated debt, because you trash your credit, you trash your currency, and then you end up with foreign debt. And then once you have that foreign debt and this little spike happens and you're tapped out, then guess what? It's game over. Nothing you can do about it. And that's how Venezuela became Venezuela, Argentina became Argentina, Turkey, uh, Ukraine, Russia, all of them. They got wiped the fuck out. Okay? Because when those interest rates start to spike, you cannot print value for a currency to, uh, to suppress that. And that's the main takeaway from this past week. That the economy is fine. The household is fine. Corporations are fine. Everything is fine. You know, uh, and suddenly, guess what? There's no uh, lenders. And the central bank is the, the, the lender of last resort. And they can't even keep uh, interest rates to their target. And you get that huge spike up. And nobody's willing to, none of the other banks are willing to step in to, to make 10% on their money instead of fucking... 1.8 holding their reserves. Why? You know, I don't know. I don't know. We'll find out. But 
this is the learning lesson of MT when they say we recognize the, the inflation constraint. <laughs> you know, you don't, because when this happens, it's game over. You can recognize it all you want. You cannot print value for a currency. You cannot, you cannot satisfy that demand, because the more you print, the more you're going to devalue it, and the more you devalue it, the more you're going to have to print, and then it's game over. 90% interest rates. Thank you for playing IMF. Come on in, and that's what I'm saying that. The bondholders are going to sell their 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 holdings. They're going to request that cash, or and that cash is going to you know grow wings and fly away. And government debt equals private sector assets. Yes, assets for the top five percent, and then the liability is for the ninety-five percent. Because in the end of the day, top five percent are going to take their money. They're going to go overseas, take it wherever the fuck they want to take it, and then you, my friend. Uh, are going to be left with the liability because you cannot grow wings and fly away. And your life savings goes out the fucking door. Your The value of your home is fucked up. Everything is, you can't sell anything and, and it's game over. So while they're telling you, yeah, you can have this for free and that pony for free and this for free. And sure, you can have a job guarantee and you can have uh, free health care and free this and free that. Yeah, it all sounds good for a vote. But the economics of it is just garbage, 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 right? And and again, we saw it last week when things are great. Imagine when things are not that great. So you want to print five, six trillion dollars annually to get all these free things and have that debt to income, uh, debt to assets, uh, uh, 22 trillion, uh, and uh, assets of 157 trillion of the U.S. Believe me, you're going to get to that uh, 157 very fast. And when it snaps, it's going to look exactly like it did last week. And it's game over. So for you little MMT tards out there that think that, oh, just taxing creates value for the currency. You are so misled, it's not even funny. You should be lynching Kelton and Mosler and Ray and Bill Bitchell and all those fucking idiots and Pavlina and they're, 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 they are the, your destruction. They're your demise. They're not here to help you. They're here to pump trillions of dollars through you, through the poor, to the top 5% while telling you, oh yeah, this is, this is, you know, for your own good. Yeah, bullshit. And lastly, we're going to talk about this, uh, this point here not happening in the cycle. So just be mindful and, and remember, leading economic indicators have fallen into every single recession since 1960 and it's at all time highs, right? It's okay, leading indicator. Well, as I pointed out to him that the leading indicator, um, and here it is, I said the leading indicator, sorry, a uh, leading indicator did not show a recession in 2007 and 8. I got it backwards, like always. Um, the leading indicator was different back then. And you can see it right here, that the leading indicator was flat going into the recession. Okay, And then it's since been revised and... Um, now, the new leading indicator, when you go back and look at it, it shows a very big drop, okay? And it started all the way back here, and then, it, yeah, definitely it was showing a, a recession. The problem is that this is the new leading indicator. So nobody really understands this or knows this uh, because I, I assume that uh, Logan was not trading back in 2008 or 9 or talking about economics since by his own admission he started doing it in 2015 but you can see it in, and unfortunately the red line is kind of hovering over on, on top of the blue line but the the leading indicator back then and this is why everybody missed it uh, did not include credit and um, uh, it was it was flat okay so there was no indication that uh, a recession was coming in fact, it looked a, a, a lot, a, a, a lot like it does today. And this is his chart. Okay, so what is this looking like? Right, it's flat. This is flat. Uh, I'm not saying that we're going into recession. That's not what I'm saying. That's not the point of this. 
but the point is that he's sitting here showing you, oh, look at this chart. See how it started to, to decline right before the recession. Look how great it looks. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, that looks great hindsight, but that's not the way it looked in 2007. And that's the problem with data. And Logan is always the first one to tell you about, well, you know, you should really understand the data. Well, he doesn't understand the data on this one. And, and I'm surprised that he's fighting me on this one because I'm not necessarily disagreeing with him. I'm just pointing out that, man, you know, in 2007, everybody fucking missed it because it didn't look like this. It looked flat. Okay. And and instead of him being, oh, okay, you know, didn't know that or whatever, he's doubling down. He's giving me this stupid uh, post that, oh, well, you know, in 2007, the leading indica indicator said this and it said, well, it says the same thing now. So what does that mean? That we're going into a fucking recession? And, and that's why I, uh, uh, where is it? I posted this, you know, that uh, the 70,000 conference board's leading indicator uh, showing an increase of 0.2% in November uh, to 111.8, following a 3% decline in October. So what does that mean? Does that mean that we're going in a recession because it, uh, the report stated as such? Come on now. <laughs> you know? Uh, for the guy who's sitting here telling everybody else, uh, you know, to be mindful of the data and know how to read it, well, he should be fucking able to read his own data because that's what it looked. And this is from the leading indicator conference board. It's not even me. I didn't create this fucking chart. That's just what it showed. And it, it was not showing uh, a, a recession in the least. And what do you think he does? Well, I'll show you what he does. Instead of him be saying, oh, okay, great, thank you. You know what he does? He doubles down on it. He doubles down and and reposts it. So I'm like, okay, well, here it is, man. You know, this is back 2011 when the leading indicator was, uh, uh, was changed. And this is what it says. You guys can read it for yourself. Right? A lot of things changed in 2011 because it didn't incorporate credit. Okay. So again, you gotta be careful uh, with these gurus. You know, these alternative media. I'll tell you how it is. The, the the media won't tell you how it is. I will. Man, a lot of a lot of garbage. A lot of garbage out there. And I have my six point model. Models don't work. I'm sorry, they don't. Okay. Just like the model in 2007, if, they, if you would have sat there and waited for uh, the leading indicator to tell you that, oh, you know, we're going into a recession, you were already fucking destroyed. It was time to start buying. So here's his response. Oh, you're putting way too much weight on the credit index. Overinvestment, the cycle came in housing, and it's like, oh, it's not the point. If you're going to use the leading indicator and tell everybody since 1960, I've been right, because he's uh, he hasn't been doing this since 1960, by the way, okay. And uh, this this is this is my back testing, okay. <laughs> and and he's like, oh, you know, he's trying to dismiss it. Well, that just shows you what an amateur he is. Yeah, he talks better than I do, you know, and he'll tell you things in a nice way and everything. But the bottom line is ignorance, 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 ignorance. So I just wrote back to him. I, I guess the conference board is, you know, it's putting too much weight on, uh, you know, <laughs> on the credit. <laughs> uh, amateur. Keep doubling down, my friend. Keep doubling down. Keep doubling down and showing your your your, your ignorance, your lack of experience. <sighs> Anyway, so I'll uh, I'll leave you with this, and uh, this is what's going to be the most important in the in the weeks ahead. That uh, if if price starts to uh, break out and hold above this trend line, we're probably going to go off to euphoria land, okay? Or if we start to break down here, which I think is going to happen then uh, the first area that's going to be important is going to be down here. And then if this breaks, then here. And we'll see where it goes from there. If it starts to break down here, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a very long way down. Because uh, 
throughout this uh, 11 years, um, you get this uh, test of the previous low uh, before it continues much higher. Okay, that, that's been the, the way market has moved. Now, maybe this time it's going to be different and it's going to go off to euphoria land. Therefore, it doesn't have to test it and just kind of fuck everybody across the board. And that's fine. Either way is fine. Uh, but um, we're going to have to wait and see. So that's, you know, we're in a key critical area. And I usually don't make these videos until I think it's it's uh, it's important for me to make them. And I went through just about everything. I could always get more in depth about things and we would sit here making, you know, eight hour videos, but, um, that's the gist of it. Okay. Uh, forget about trade wars and all that stuff. Not that it doesn't impact. Of course it impacts. There's always an impact, but, um, this is not what's really going on. The global economy started to slow way before, um, trade wars. So anyway, uh, come down to patreon.com slash mine this one uh, if you're just a passive investor you just want to know what uh, the overall uh, uh, mindset of mine is in terms of long-term investing I, I have a ten dollar subscription for that and then if you want the more in-depth stuff uh, we also have a subscription for that so patreon.com slash mine this one and uh, you'll get more up-to-date uh, information so thank you for watching Stay away from these fucking, you know, bozos. You know, everybody fucking knows everything. You know, be smart. You are smart because you know you don't know. And if you were sitting here relying on a fucking leading indicator in 2007, guess what? It never showed you the signal and you got fucked, okay? And that's true of all data points. It all They all look great, hindsight. Everybody can tell you a great story about them and how perfect they were in, you know, for the, since 1960 and how their models work and how the fiscal flows are bullish and how, you know, the world is coming to an end every fucking single year since 2008. You can listen to all these idiots and you can get a lot of hearts and a lot of thumbs up and a lot of, you know, praises, a lot of followers, but none of that shit is going to make you money. None of it. Believe me, none of it is going to be, if you are serious about investing, okay, none of those, the, 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 those people are going to make you money. I will at least try to be honest and help you, <laughs> you know, tell you what reality is. And, and that's the best that I can do. I, I, I cannot tell you what the future is going to be. I don't know if we're going to go into euphoria land and I don't know if we're going to crash and I don't know if there's going to be a recession in the next six months, a year or whatever. Okay. But, uh, uh, I will tell you what I think. And, uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Take care of yourselves. Talk to you soon. Patreon.com slash real macro. Before this battle is over, the world will know that few stood against many.